What's up everybody, I'm Matt Leiner, 2004 Heisman Trophy winner, and you're watching the Harris Highlight Show. Coming to you live from the Bill Austin Radio Studio at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism in beautiful downtown Phoenix. This is episode six of season four of the Harris Highlight Show. Joining me this week is our college football analyst, Josh Schaefer, our college football expert, Lyle Goldstein, with our executive producer, Brady Klain. Remember what happened last time you sat on the chairs? Oh, we are going to keep that on the down low, because I'm your yes. host for the evening, Blake Harris. Well, it must be some fun week, guys, because Josh is standing on the chair. It's Rosh Hashanah. You want us to lift you up in the chair instead? Oh, yes. Oh, is that that dun 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 dun? No, that's like that's like what they do at the Diamondbacks game. Well, is that's the song I think. No, Lyle, as a fellow Jewish man. Don't you think you're asking Brady this? I don't know any of this stuff. What's your mic number? Eight. Well, your last name every week. Your last name is Goldstein. That's true. That's offensive. But it but it's been about ten years since I've done any of this. So, Brady, what what what's today? Uh, today is uh, Rosh Hashanah. It's a Jewish New Year. Ah, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Happy Rosh Hashanah, everyone. Yeah, so happy that to all of you out there. Happy that. We're, we're very grateful. I already forgot what it's called. Rosh Hashanah. We're very grateful that you're spending it. You want a Hebrew lesson? Want to know what I mean? I'm good. You can... We can... Okay, that is more than enough. This is already getting out of hand. So thanks for spending your Tuesday night or your Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever whatever day you're watching this on YouTube. But we're grateful to have you guys. Make sure to follow the show on Twitter at the HH Show underscore. And yeah, listen live every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on BlazeRadioOnline.com. But I guess I'm going to ask again, guys, how is our Tuesday night going? It's going well. I mean, we've got October baseball. Um, so that's fun. There's a, there's a wild card game going on right now. Uh, kind of, kind of a week where I don't really think any, I can't, I guess I can't really speak for all of you, but not really stressed out about any work to do because ASU does not play this weekend. So we don't have any, Lyle and I don't have any really radio stuff to, to get prepared for production stuff. Uh, we don't have to plan ahead in terms of homework so we can procrastinate all we want. And there's, I mean, honestly, it's, I, I hope it's an exciting week for college football, but there are a lot of teams on buys this week. I'm going to be watching a lot of baseball and a lot of college football. Yeah, I'm going to be watching a lot of one of those. Go college football. <laughs> Yeah, now speaking of the bye weeks, we have to learn that the hard way because in college football fantasy, it seems like every player on our team is on a bye. So the waiver wire has been a lot of fun this week. I had to add three extra bench spots to our league because it's just there's <laughs> there's nothing you can do. I guess for certain players, you can't drop them. Josh has been unable to drop Colin Johnson. Who's been hurt for the last three weeks. Well, I think it's like a thing. It's like with regular fantasy football, like your first two or three picks you make, you're unable to drop them. So it's like our friend Matt is unable to drop Antonio Brown from the league because he was a second round pick. But like that's <laughs> Colin Johnson was not one of my first two picks. Which makes this that much more interesting. But we have three extra bench spots. But now we're going to transition into our college football fantasy. And I, I, he's he's adjusting something now. I A few weeks ago, I came out and said I'm never going to lose a game. I got cocky. I got arrogant. And I lost to Josh this week in a very low-scoring affair. It was the lowest-scoring game of the year. Josh defeated me 163-156. to 156. But that's because I had DTR, guys, the UCLA quarterback, in the final game. And he exits the third quarter with an injury. So, wait, wait. Can we start? Because I would like to ask, why... Did you have DTR to begin with? Because I had Khalil Tate, which I only found out about 30 minutes beforehand. He was going to be out for the game. So luckily for me, I was able to drop someone that was on a buy and pick up DTR. And he was doing fantastic. He got me 15.5 points, but he got injured in the third quarter, exited the game. Had he stayed in the game, I probably would have gotten at least seven points out of him no! and beaten no! Josh. No! 
But that's okay. And th- now, mind you, this is also losing to Josh by seven, while Jalen Hurts put up, what is this, 38, and CeeDee Lamb put up 35. And I know there was some shenanigans going on the other day where Lyle was trying to get CeeDee Lamb from Josh, I believe. No, is this I have true? CD he Lamb. has CeeDee oh, Lamb. Oh, in the other league. Uh, I get these leagues mixed up, so I never have, mind. Yeah, no, he has CD Lamb in the other league. I have CD Lamb in this league. Ah, well, Lyle is still trying to get CD Lamb, but so yeah, Josh gets it's essentially 80 points from these two guys, but everyone else on his team just kind of, you know, they pooped their big boy pants. But then yeah. again, everyone in our lineups did, but Brady, I don't know if you have any inspirational music or anything or any great sound bites because it finally happened. Oh my God, who the hell cares? <laughs> okay, not. <laughs> Literally not the soundbite I was looking for at all. That does not help with anything, but... All right, I guess that'll do. <laughs> Lyle Lyle picked up his first win of the season. It, is this supposed to be sad? Yeah, for me. Oh. Because <laughs> I lost to you. Well, you beat me by three points the first time, and, and thank goodness it's finally... Uh, cat's finally out of the bag. But uh, shout out to you, Justin Fields. You've been one of... Like, Pretty much the only consistent thing about this team. And he put up a nice 31. <laughs> Eno put up 25 and 163 to 154, the final score. Hey, We're now 1 and 4. T. Higgins got you 20.9. But, Lyle, I don't know if you have it pulled up right now. Look at our starting quarterbacks and then our second starting quarterbacks. Mm. So oh, I, know. I, I had two. He had 45. Justin Fields had 31. My second quarterback was Bryce Perkins with 5.46. And yours was Ian Book with 5.5. So that game right there, that Notre Dame-Virginia game, had some terrible quarterback play. Now, just like the matchup with Josh and I, this was another low-scoring affair. Lyle gets the the victory, 163 to 154. So overall, just because this is the league where every week we're putting up 200 plus points, but our teams just couldn't get the job this couldn't get the job done this week. And so it, now things start to get a little interesting, guys. Because just like that, Lyle, you were right in the thick of things in regards to standings. I also looked at this earlier, guys. Again, I there's so many problems with this league. I guess all four of us make the playoffs at, when it's all said and done. It's not the top two teams, so. I guess it doesn't matter at this point what the standings are. It just matters how you do those final two Regular weeks. Regular season champions. But now That's looking at this, Josh, I mean, overall the point scoring is fantastic. So Josh is 4-1. and one, I'm 3-2. and two. BK is 2-3. and three, Lyle's 1-4. and four. Josh has 980 points. I have 972. Lyle has 920, while BK has 919. Yeah, how about that? Mm. Yeah, wow. How about that? Mm. So things are starting to get awfully interesting. We'll have to wait and see what happens this upcoming week. But it's time now to, tra- to transition and talk some college football now. I, what have we been I, doing? Yeah, that's also true. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. Your host for the evening doesn't know what he's hosting. That's hey, I never know what I'm hosting. Nothing brings me more more joy than to talk about the AP poll. AP poll. You guys know this. Yeah, Everyone but, knows this. AP, of course. The AP poll is the absolute best. It is. But it's also the worst. So, oh, yeah. instead of talking about the AP poll, which, by the way, this is probably one of the more balanced weeks, though, in regards to voting, where Alabama, they are in first now with 29 first place votes. Clemson has 18. Ohio State gets seven first place votes, and Georgia gets four. It's not often you see four teams getting first place votes. So, the AP, AP that's a, it's a tongue twister, guys. The AP poll, as flawed as it is. You've only said w- it every show for the entire th- time we've done this show. Entire That's time. also true. So, instead of just talking about the AP poll, we're going to create our own AP poll. We're going to create our own college football playoff poll. Where, guys, you're going to give me your current four best teams in the country. Now, I wrote this in the notes. Now, this is taking all preseason bias out of the equation. This is taking all preseason rankings out of the equa- out of the equation. This is if the season started and there were no rankings at all, and this is the first week you have to rank your own teams. So... If you were at the helm of the college football or the Harris Highlight Show college football playoff rankings or just the college football rankings, what would your top four be? And let's start with number one. Um, so am I? Are, are we going around everyone's giving their one yes. or are we going one through four? We're each going to give our one, then each our two, then our three, then our four. Then if Do you want to some... start with four? Well, all right, we can start with four. Okay. Let's start with four. So... Before we even get into this, I want to I want to point out that I think teams 1 through 8 are a lot closer in the in the AP poll. I think teams 1 through 8 are a lot closer in talent than people actually think. And it's also worth pointing out that of all these teams, gosh. He's a hindrance to his own show. Um, Blake, 5 minute timeout, your mic's off. <laughs> Blake's going to the penalty box. 
I, I think teams one through eight are a lot closer in talent than people think. And it's also worth pointing out that of all of these teams, the Auburn Tigers up to this point have had the best resume of anybody in college football, I think, so far. Um, but with that being said, I, I, I think I just want to throw that out there when we go into our, into our four. Um, so for me, number four, I've got Georgia. Right off the bat, I think they're extremely talented. Uh, they've already beaten a team like Notre Dame, and now we get to really see them have some even more tough tests once SEC play starts. I have an SEC team at four, but it's not Georgia. It's the LSU Tigers, and these guys already have one really good win on their resume. They went and beat Texas. They have an offense for the first time in a long time, and a really good offense at that with a star-studded quarterback like Joe Burrow. And, yeah, I mean – the, the AP poll has them at what? They have them at five. I've got them a spot higher at four because I think they've been playing some of the best football in the country so far. Hey, guys, thank you. We love you, man. Go Tigers. So at number four for me, I'm going to jump over, and this is going to be probably one that neither of you picked because you didn't. I'm going Ohio State because I, I like them higher than Georgia purely because they played five games so far. Georgia's only played four, so I give that nod to Ohio State. Simple wow. as that. They've also, I mean, you look at this Ohio State team, though. They've scored 262 points. 43 allowed in five games. Georgia scored 170, and they've allowed 40. Yes, it's one game, but you look at the discrepancy between one game and all those points, I'm going Ohio State at four. Yeah, with my number four, I'm going to go with LSU. It is tough because we didn't get to see them this past week, but, I mean, they had a great win on the road at Texas, and offensively, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I would assume they're probably the highest scoring team in college football they got to be averaging I mean, my math's not the best but i'm going to say this is about 52 57.8 50? points per game know, num- just number one in the country all right so they're the best offense in all of college football now they have had some slip ups against texas and Vanderbilt with the defense but i think joe burrow heisman not heisman favorite definitely top three as of this moment but lsu's looked really impressive and again a win at Texas, that's probably one of the three most impressive wins of the season so far. So for right now, I'm going to have to have LSU at number four in my current rankings, which brings us to number three. So at, at number three, it was really hard for me to keep LSU out of this. For me, Georgia and LSU were really interchangeable, but I took Georgia at four, and I've got Ohio State at three. Um, kind of like what, what Lyle mentioned already. I think they're really well balanced. I am laughing, not currently. I was thinking about this the other day, and I was just laughing about the fact that on our opening show, I'm pretty sure I said this could be the year that Michigan finally, under Jim Harbaugh, beats Ohio State. Not a chance. Not a chance with Justin Fields leading this offense. Um, I think they're probably the most complete team in the Big Ten, other than just being the best team in the Big Ten. Um, and I think they're one of the most well-rounded teams in the country um and i i would say that still in regards to the teams that i have in my top four i think ohio state might be the most well-rounded i'm gonna bounce right off you there i got the ohio state buckeyes at number three justin fields i said it at the start of the year that he had the chance to be the best ohio state quarterback in a long time even with a guy like dwayne haskins last year who finished top three in the heisman voting i think fields is above and beyond that look this ohio state team gave up 21 points week one to fau since then, they've given up 10 or less, and that includes on the road at Nebraska and a huge trounce of a win for the Buckeyes. So for a team that, like last year when they gave up 50-plus to Purdue, the defense lagged at times. It looks like the defense is as stout as ever. They have a player like Chase Young off the edge, who's maybe the best defensive player in the whole country. And then you have maybe the, maybe the best offensive player in the whole country, certainly in the top five to seven in Justin Fields. This team is really, really strong and well-rounded. Uh, you know, I'm sticking with Georgia at number three. I know you guys had them at four and switched that around with LSU and Georgia, but I'm going Georgia at three because their offense is so dynamic, especially with Jake Fromm at the helm. He's done a great job so far this season. What was that sound? Oh, oh my goodness. Lyle's doing something with the camera. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So there's just something about this Georgia offense that they go through a formidable quarterback with Jake Fromm. He's able to play solid offense and has been, I, I think, one of the – top quarterbacks in the country so far this year. So I'm putting Georgia at three. I mean, th- this is a really tough one for me because I feel, I think Josh mentioned it before we start, teams one through eight, you could easily make a case that they could be in the top four. You could, probably not a really good case, but you could still make the case that Notre Dame potentially could be one of the four best teams as well because they played Georgia so well and they actually had a chance to win that game. With my number three team, I'm actually going to go with Oklahoma. 
who I know a bunch of the country is really high on Jalen Hurts. I think at the moment, it, I think it's 1A and 1B right now with him and Justin Fields in regards to who's going to be, you know, taking home the Heisman. I mean, we know what their offense can do with Oklahoma. And let's see, they put up 49, 70, 48, 55 points. But their defense this year has been fantastic, which that was always kind of like the downside of Oklahoma or any necessarily Big 12 team. It was always their defense was horrible, and that's what's going to keep them from getting over the hump. Oklahoma, they have the best defense, I think, in the Big 12. They've looked really good this year. They have some really good players. I forget I forget who it was um, in, like in their secondary, I think it was, where this past week they were saying at the end of the season he's going to be like their best defensive player. They got Kenneth Murray at linebacker, who's an absolute stud. He led the, I think he led the country, at least the Big 12 in tackles last year. He's a really good stud there on their defense squad and I I just think Oklahoma top to bottom I don't know how they're going to be beaten because I sure I mean it's sure not going to be on the offensive side of the ball it's going to be on the defensive side but like I said their defense has looked really good so far and I, I like what I've seen from the Sooners so I'm going to put Oklahoma at three which brings us to number two to number two, I think once I give this, you'll realize who I have at number one. So I'll pretty much just straight up say my number one and number two are exactly the same as the AP poll. And it's simply because based off of merit, based off of what I've seen so far, there just really isn't a lot for me to take them out, except for maybe Clemson. And Clemson's the team that I've got at number two, which is the same as the AP poll. And there, Clemson has done nothing that really proves to me that they deserve to be taken out of my top four, let alone the top two. But I just think that there's a team that's playing better football than them right now, and they're the number one team in the country. And I think you can argue and say that even the two teams that I have at three and four in Ohio State and Georgia, respectively, I think you can argue that they've been playing better football than Clemson, but there is no reason for me to take them out of my top two at the moment. I, I have Georgia, too, so I guess I have them at least so far the highest of anybody, and, and a big part of that is because of the home win against Notre Dame. Now, there's been two really big wins so far this year. It was LSU at Texas, and it was Georgia at home against the Irish. And I think the fact that Georgia held their ground and held a pretty good Notre Dame team to just 17 points on their own home turf is really impressive. And, and outside of that game... They've had a pretty good offense so far, too. And, yeah, I know they've played a couple of pushover teams and a couple of inferior teams, but the offense has had no problem scoring. The defense hasn't given up more than 20 so far this year. And you look down at their schedule. I mean, they play in the SEC East. They don't have to face some of the juggernauts that the Bamas and the A&Ms and the LSUs of the, LSUs of the West do. So you look at this Georgia team. I think they've been really strong through their first few games, and I've got them as high as number two. Uh, I'm sticking with the trend that Josh was going on. I'm going with what the AP poll says now. I'm having Clemson at two because the offense that they have now is ranked 25th in the country in comparison to the team that I'm going to be putting at number one. Hey, surprise, surprise, it's Alabama. They're fourth in the country. The least amount of points Alabama has scored in a game so far this year is 42 against Duke. You switch over to Clemson, the least amount of points they've scored all season is 21 against North Carolina. The most all-around complete team deserves to be number one in the most difficult, challenging conference there is. And that's why I have Bama at one if we're doing two and one. So Clemson's at two, Bama's at one for me. Well, it looks like Lyle and I are going to be, you know, going against the curve of this one. I do have Georgia at two, and that's just because I think they do have the best win of the season, which is their home win against Notre Dame. And the rest of their games, they've just blown everyone out. I mean, what was you said, the most points they've allowed this year is 17, so their defense is unreal. Their offense looks really good, and as I mentioned, that win against Notre Dame was a good one. With Jake Fromm at the helm, not Justin Fields or Jacob Eason, but we know how Lyle and I feel about that. But, yeah, I mean, Georgia, I... Again, they're going to be one of the best teams out there, and they've proven it by getting that win, and then in the other games, they haven't had anything close. I mean, if you consider oh, it was just a 24-point victory at Vanderbilt close, I mean, if that's your worst game of the season, I think a lot of teams will take that. Now, before we go around and give our number one team, let's turn to Twitter, where I ask people to give us their top four teams, just to see what people have to say. Now, we got a lot of responses. I'll go through these fairly quickly, if I can. Caleb Rosenblum says Ohio State, Bama, LSU, and Oklahoma. Colson Dobson says LSU, Bama, Georgia, and Ohio State. Reed Pryor, Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, and Georgia. By week, 3-1, also known as at Desmond Burner, Alabama, Georgia, LSU, Ohio State. Sportsboy Jr., Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Oklahoma. Baggies, Tech, Ohio State, Auburn, Oklahoma, Bama. 
Falcon Hunting, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, LSU, and there's a, there's a few more that I just can't get to. So a lot of teams, a lot of people have the exact same teams, but some of these that are probably, I assume, not going to be number one on the list, Auburn, they're a team where they've had some of the best wins. I mean, they have two ranked wins already this season. I think the only team in the country that has two ranked wins, Wisconsin. Now, they did have a pretty rough game this past week against Northwestern that didn't help their case, but, I mean, they've looked really, really good as well. And again, LSU, I don't think LSU, or actually, no, did LSU crack any of our top fours? Yeah, they, I had them at four. And I think I had them at four as well. So LSU, there's another team that's right on the edge. They can make the case as well. And I said it was also with Notre Dame, probably not now a top four team, but with how they played against Georgia and how they played the rest of the season, you can make the case they're maybe in that five to six range as well. So I know you guys already kind of talked about it, but just Josh, you and Brady can give your number one, and then Lyle and I can go deep into why we have number ones for our teams. Yeah, um, I, I kind of already touched on it, uh, and I think I, I see where this is kind of going with the four of us. I, at least I think so, and I'll have comments for that afterwards. But for me, it's Alabama. I, I think Brady kind of hit the nail on the head. Is I, I think they are the most uh, well-rounded team in the country, uh, right up there with Ohio State. I think they've been they've been really well-rounded too, both on uh, on both sides of the ball. Um, I think Tua's been phenomenal, and I think that he's just being Tua, and I think that a lot of people aren't even paying attention to that, um, especially when Jalen Hurts also puts up video game numbers, when Joe Burrow's been so good, when Justin Fields, a transfer to Ohio State, who was already a big name coming in because he was transferring, I think that was a big storyline. So I, I, I think that Tua and his play, and even the play just of the number one team in the country as a whole, I think that's been flying under the radar. Um, and, and when I've looked at games to watch, when Alabama is on TV, there are games that I would put above watching Alabama every week. And I think it's just because they're that good. It's that sometimes it's like, you know what, I'd rather watch a closer game of two teams that maybe aren't playing super well rather than see Alabama just blow somebody, somebody out every week. But I think it's just because of that good. I have, I have Bama too. I think we're going to have all the same number one. So Alabama, look, they've given up a few points this year. So what? Their offense is unreal. They probably have the deepest receiving core in the country. I mean, Devontae Smith, who's what, their number three to four receiver, he had five touchdowns this past weekend. And then, yeah, two was playing out of his mind like usual. Their defense is stout. I mean, how much more can you say about these guys? They're, they're the best team in the country. The, the big thing for me is, I said this earlier, I do have Bama at one. But it's week six of the college football season, and this is Bama's first matchup against a ranked opponent. So, Josh, like you said a minute ago, this could be the first game of the year where you actually might tune in and watch Alabama. I, I would say just because it's a ranked matchup. And it's a barely ranked matchup. It's against number 25, Texas A&M. So, I, and I think that's ugly. Yes, I, I do too. Ugly. Yeah. If it were maybe like, I don't know, number 5 LSU, that'd be a lot, a lot prettier. We'll have to wait a couple weeks for that. Well, the Alabama-Texas A&M, that's next week. Oh, Bama's yeah, they're on, on a they're bye, on a this, bye this week. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Bama can't lose this week. They also can't win. So, I think until what would be, what, week 7 of the college football season, they don't play a ranked opponent? Would that be next week? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Six, well, considering seven, they're playing by this week, I yeah. it's I Dude, don't think by is ranked. I feel bad for by. They play against a lot of teams this week. They do. Yeah. Now, before I get to my number one team, let me just say, talent wise, I think Alabama is easily number one. Oh, here we go. It's another Blake thing. But when you take into account what other teams have done in the country, I just don't have room for Alabama in the top four. My current number one team I have is the Ohio State Buckeyes, and here is why. We've talked about... we've t uh, Oh, it's not a text I got because that's my new ringtone. Ohio State, offensively, one of the best teams. I don't know if Brady still has the points per game stat, but I would assume Ohio State is For somewhere... State? I would assume they're somewhere near the top five. They're third at 52.4 points per game. So offensively, they're the third best. Justin Fields looks absolutely unstoppable. Their opponent's points per game, they're fourth, at allowing 8.6. So there you go. Ohio State, top four in offense and top four in defense. I'm not entirely sure if they're the only team right there that's top four in both, but I would have to assume they are. Now, granted, they haven't played a ranked team yet, but they played a very good Cincinnati team. They beat them by 42 points. They played at Indiana, which has been like Ohio State's kryptonite. I don't know BK can attest to that, where for whatever reason, Ohio State has not necessarily lost Indiana a lot recently, but they struggle at Indiana. Indiana plays to the level of their opponents. So there you go. So that was a very, you know, usually a tough game. They won by 41 points. 
they beat Miami of Ohio by 71, and then they went on the road to Nebraska, which a lot of people were thinking was going to be a somewhat close game. The spread was only, I think, 17 points, and they won by essentially 40 points. Ohio State, we know their offense is legit with Justin Fields. He's probably the Heisman favorite as of right now. But defensively, Ohio State has one of the best defenses, if not the best defense in the country. And it's pretty easy when you have the best defensive player in the entire country with Chase Young, who easily could be the number one pick in this upcoming draft. Again, I know talent-wise, Alabama and Clemson are probably two, and probably one and two in regards to talent. But like I said, you take everything away from what you've seen this season, and I think Alabama definitely more than Clemson. You can make you can make the case Alabama just because their offense has been so good. Whereas their defense, their Alabama defense hasn't been the normal Alabama defense. I mean, they allowed thirty something points to Ole Miss this past week. They've you know had games where they allow more points. They allowed twenty three to South Carolina, which is not, it's fine. But in regards to Alabama esque, that's not okay. So those are what I have. I again. I am not saying Alabama and Clemson aren't two of the best teams, but as of right now, in regards to this season, I don't think you can put them. You definitely can't put Clemson in there. I don't think, I think have them at two, I think that's a stretch. I mean, they probably should have lost this weekend at North Carolina, if we're being honest. It was just an awful play called by North Carolina when they went for two to get it. Clemson could have and should have lost, but aside from that, yes, I'll give Clemson the nice victory against Texas A&M, but as we've seen, Texas A&M, they almost lost to an Arkansas team that previously lost to San Jose State. So I don't think Texas A&M is as good as we thought they were. So again, I know there, there might be some criticism for that. But as of right now, I think the teams that have played the best so far in college football are Ohio State, Georgia, Oklahoma, and then LSU. And that's my top four. Yeah, I respect that. I mean, for, for me, I, I'm not ready to take Clemson out. Um, but... but mixing up LSU was was the toughest part for me because that's why I started the whole the whole ranking with I, I think that teams one through eight in the AP poll are a lot closer in talent than than people actually think they are and and I think it's going to be really fun once SEC and Big Ten play actually start because then we get to see I think uh, better matchups for these teams ranked in the top five yeah and I think the top six is so interchangeable at this point because they're all undefeated. and Well, and the top eight teams are undefeated, and, and nine of the top ten are undefeated. I have Clemson out of my top four, too. I just It's like Blake said. They had a very underwhelming game against UNC. Honestly, against the Texas A&M team, who I thought from the start probably wasn't top 12, I thought Clemson would put up more points than that. They didn't. Trevor Lawrence has, for a guy who I called Thanos at the beginning of the year, he has not played like Thanos. He has had some major, major struggles in his sophomore year so far. He's looked a little bit underwhelming, too. I have Alabama at one just because, look, and I know you talked about their defense. Alabama's defense has some games like this where maybe, you know, they're facing an inferior opponent. Maybe they play a little bit, you know, softer coverage. Like, they gave up 31 points last year against Arkansas, but they put up 65. I'm not going to freak out about Alabama yet. But, yeah, I agree with Clemson. You have a one-point win against the North Carolina team with a true freshman quarterback, and then you only beat a Texas A&M team by 14. And, again, get they were ranked. I thought they should have won by more. They've been a little underwhelming to this point. And I think the four teams that Blake had ahead of them, I mean the four teams that I have ahead of them with Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, LSU, I think they've all been better than Clemson at this well, then point. It's also just going into Alabama as to, you know, it seems like it's what we talk about with Alabama every year, who have they played. And you look at this right now, and their best win is South Carolina, who I believe South Carolina is, what, 2-2? Two and two? I want to say I'm looking at this right now. Are they? No, it's just one loss. Two, oh, they're two and three. Two and three. So yeah, your your best win of the season is at South Carolina, who's two and three. Where you know these other teams, they just do have you know more impressive wins. I'd say. Now here's one of the big things that I look at, and we just talked about this when discussing all of our teams. Is all right. I look at the points per game. I look at the points allowed per game. The defenses. The top four defenses in the country. Ohio State's number four. We we established that, but one through four are all Big Ten schools. Let me guess. Go one ahead. of them, well, probably number one's Wisconsin. Wisconsin, number one, uh, 7.3 points per game. Number two, Iowa. There are three. Okay. Yeah, I'd say Iowa. And it's it's definitely not Michigan State anymore because they allowed like 30 something points this past week. Ooh. It's not Northwestern because, you know, they just had a pretty bad game. It's probably going to be some random one we're not even thinking of. It's one of the most popular ones. Oh, From Michigan? Nope. Yeah, I was going to say, it didn't feel like it'd be Michigan. Well,. I give up. Penn is, is State. Michi- it's not Michigan. Oh, it's Penn State. State. Penn but, State. But here's one of the big things is what team do we all watch every single week? That's Arizona State. All right? 
Alabama's defense so I mean, far I'm, this country. I'm watching. All right. All right, Blake. I'm watching University of Cincinnati every week. Yeah, dude, go Bearcats. <laughs> every sing- uh, so, Bama's defense is ranked 13th, allowing 14.8 points per game. The Arizona State Sun Devils have the 10th ranked defense in the country right now at 14.4. But you look at the disparity between 1 and 10, it's a whole touchdown. So that's where I, that's where I go into factoring the most is the overall, not just, oh, how have they looked, it's the true numbers of points per game, points allowed per game, and this just speaks for itself. With Ohio State, I, I I have them rated too low at four. There you go. And even then, again, we we talked about it, like Auburn. You know, they got a ranked win against Oregon, a ranked win at on the road at Texas A and M, and Mississippi State. They completely clobbered them when we were all at Red Robin enjoying some nice clucks and fries. Actually, you know, that was just Lyle that was enjoying the clucks and fries. And we look at the score, and it's like... it's like <laughs> Lyle looks so genuinely... Ha- and it's like 28-7 to 7 Auburn with like five minutes to go in the first quarter. So Auburn, again, you can make the case that they'd be in the top four. It's just I couldn't put them in there as well. But I mean, there's so many teams where... If we found Clemson's weakness, if Alabama's not the, you know exactly the same Alabama, we may, we may be in for a treat this year in college football where there's actually a year where... A lot of teams can can make the case now. Now, granted, Florida's sitting there number ten and five, and now I don't think that's going to last much longer. But we'll have to wait and see. I mean, there's a lot that can happen. But overall, guys, those are our top four. Leave a comment on this video below with what your top four is. Who you think the four best teams are in the country? I would love to know why Brady's laughing. Where did you say Lyle was eating during? Or he was doing what? Clucks and fries. Where? Red Robin. Red Robin. Yum. Yum. I missed that. That was great timing. Well, I got to be totally honest. As soon as I opened my mouth, I was like, oh, no, Brady was setting himself up for a sound bite, so I really needed to nail that. You're fine. Thank you. All right, guys. So we talked about our top four teams now. We're going we're gonna to spend about a minute or two on this because I feel like this needs to be talked about because it was really essentially the only noteworthy game from this past weekend, but that's the fact that Clemson almost lost to North Carolina. Now, North Carolina, as they should, went for two when they took well, when they game within one with about a minute and a half left because I think if they would have gone to overtime, that would have ended in one overtime with Clemson on top. They run a very questionable play call. They end up losing the game. But guys, we all said, I think this is one of the over-unders, that Clemson wouldn't be within a game with 14 points the rest of the season. They squeak out a victory here. So is this something that should be concerning with the Clemson Tigers? Or is this kind of just like a slip-up? They didn't come ready to play. North Carolina was kind of underlooked a little. Or should Clemson actually start to be... Should Clemson be concerned? Because Trevor Lawrence, yet again, has not looked that ideal and it's it's i don't i mean like i said it's been one game but should we be worried about clemson yes no about north carolina if they can still compete in the acc i think that that's tough to say no look i think that uh I think that North Carolina isn't as much of a slouch as they've been in recent years. I think they do have some respectable wins, but they're still a team that Clemson should beat up on. Um, You know, they're averaging 24 points a game, which is respectable. They're also allowing 24 points a game. Uh, They are nothing super special, but um, I'm not out on North Carolina yet. Clemson should absolutely beat them by 30 points, though. So I'm not super concerned with Clemson. I think they're going to bounce back. But it's something to take note of, that that they simply have not been putting out the results that people think. But also, we need to remember that these guys are not superhuman. Um, Alabama could lose a game this year, and the world is going to stop turning for a few minutes. But we need to remember that there are capable teams of beating these guys. Um, And I think that we just saw a little bit of a Clemson hiccup. Uh, I think they go undefeated. I think they make the playoff because they're going to go undefeated in a Power 5 conference. I think they're going to win their conference. And uh, even if they're not one of the best four teams in college football, which is something we can debate for a long time of if they go undefeated and win their conference championship, but we still think that there are four teams that are better than them, should they still get in? Bottom line, I think they get in, and then that's when I think we'll actually get to see them get tested by a legitimate team. I agree. Look, Clemson's going 12-0, and they're winning the ACC title. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it saying I think. They're going to. Their schedule is so weak. There is not a lot of good teams in the ACC. They're so far and away better than everybody else. So the real test, like Josh said, when we'll get to see if they're actually still legit this year or not, is come January or late December, come playoff time, when they go against the Alabamas or whoever. Because here's the truth. I know there's like, I know nine of the top ten teams are undefeated right now. It's not going to stay that way. End of the year, there's maximum going to be three. So when that happens, and Clemson's still one of those undefeated teams, they're going to get in. They're going to win their conference, and they're going to get in. So 
yeah, look, this game against UNC was very underwhelming. Trevor Lawrence has a lot of room to grow in the second half of the year. But this is still, talent-wise, maybe the best team in the country. And I think, ultimately, by the end of the season, that's when they'll be really at their highest point. All I've got to say is the fighting Jeffrey Saturday's almost got it done. That's all i got to say. How did he do, by the way? Uh, he didn't play. He's been he's being Richard. Yeah, freshman. That's okay. <sighs> But, I mean, I'm glad we at least got to see this. I'm sure it was a wake-up call for Clemson. And, if anything, this this is good for other teams because it makes teams think Clemson can be defeated. I don't I mean, yeah. I don't know. I think I think everything just happened to go right for North Carolina. They got on the board, like, right away in the game, so that helped them get a nice boost. But this shows that Clemson can be defeated, and it'll be interesting to see moving forward because this is not the same Trevor Lawrence we saw last year, to say the least. He has not looked good this season. Not sure if this the hype is getting to him, but Clemson, I mean, they're still going to be fine, as Lyle mentioned. They're going to go undefeated. They're going to win the ACC. They're going to be in the college football playoff. They're going to be undefeated. But now it's just a matter of when they go against a team like Oklahoma, a team like Ohio State, or a team like Bama or someone else, I well, to wait and see. Maybe they get a Notre Dame rematch, Lyle. Maybe Notre Dame gets their second chance. Maybe it, it Can is. Can they take him down this year? Probably not. It, it is worth noting that I don't think Clemson has been a bad football team. Um, they just been that, underwhelming. Yes, you're absolutely right. I think underwhelming is the best term to put it because you look at Trevor Lawrence. He's still got eight touchdowns and over 1,100 yards. Uh, he, there are just quarterbacks in I college. I think that's foot- what Anthony Gordon did in one game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But he goes. He's also thrown five interceptions. His QBR is at like 78. Um, he could be better, and we've expected him to be better. And there are just other quarterbacks in college football. There are other teams in college football that have just looked a lot better. So that's why I'm really excited to see conference play start. Maybe not for Clemson because they're going to go 12-0. But um, I'm excited to see Big Ten and SEC play really start to get underway because I think that, like I said earlier, those teams 1 through 8, maybe even 1 through 10, I think are so close in talent. I think this year, more than some years past when we've been doing this show, I think that there are more than five really good teams in college football that can compete for a playoff spot. Yeah. Do, do you think part of it with Lawrence is all the pressure? Because you got to keep in mind he's still a you know nineteen year old kid who just won a national championship as a true freshman. People started talking about in the off season last year that he should straight up sit for two years because yeah. he was such a godly well, that's quarterback. That's ridiculous. That's but, ridiculous. Yeah, I mean that that's absurd. Yeah, and the guy played, what, eight games? But, like, yeah, he's really, really good, and he still could very well be the number one overall pick come next year. Who but, knows? He could have pulled De'Eric King and redshirted. And that's, redshirt. That's yeah. true, too. You know, Kelly Bryant's been pretty good, too. Yeah. Uh, no, he has. And, and come 2021, I still think, ultimately, Lawrence is the number one pick. But, I mean, it's hard to not hear some of the noise, isn't it? It's hard to not yeah. hear what people are saying about you. And when people are calling you the next Peyton Manning at age 18 and that you should sit for two whole years, I mean, it's got to get you a little bit. I'm not saying throwing eight touchdowns compared to five interceptions is a uh, is a good thing, but maybe it's a little bit humbling. So he's still going to be, for the most part, in the national spotlight, especially on the East Coast, especially in the Carolinas. They're going to be focused on him because he's the starting quarterback of the number two team in the country, and he's Trevor Lawrence. And with that being said, and all the things he did last year. But maybe it is a better thing for him if he's kind of taken out of the spotlight compared to players like Tua and Justin Fields and Jalen Hurts and Joe Burrow. Maybe that's a good thing because once you get all these guys in the SEC conference per se where you see LSU and Georgia and Alabama and Auburn and you see them all start going up against each other. Meanwhile, Clemson's over here doing their own thing going 12-0. and Maybe that's a little bit better for him and it takes him maybe a little bit more into the background on a national level while all of these other guys kind of put up huge numbers. He doesn't need to win a Heisman every year. He doesn't need to be in Heisman contention every year because he's still, I mean, you can look at his stats ignoring the five interceptions, and he's still been pretty good. So, and I think he's still probably one of the most well-rounded and talented quarterbacks, and I do think that in a few years he's going to go number one overall. I mean, for all we know, he could kind of just be hiding in the shadows for 12 games, and then all of a sudden he explodes out of nowhere for two when they matter the most in the playoffs. I mean, he's currently fallen to number, the seventh ranked, not seventh ranked, Take two. Use take two. He's currently sitting at number seven for the Heisman odds after starting the season number one. Yeah. Which is the perfect transition into our Heisman talk. Now, we've kind of just briefly gone over it in previous shows, but it's officially October, meaning it's starting to get legit, guys. I mean, we're, what, six weeks in now. It's time to start taking the Heisman rankings pretty seriously. So we are going to give our updated Heisman 
rankings. We can go five, four, three, two, one across or whatever, or you guys can just go your five through one or whatnot. So Josh, since you're going to be going first, I'll let you choose how we do this. Um, I'm going to start with number four, and even in the in the rundown this week, there was the note that said, "All right, let's actually start taking our Heisman." front runner seriously because for the last couple weeks you said oh yeah these are uh, these are four but these guys are also in contention narrowing it down to actually four was kind of tough um oh, wait, wait are we doing four or five you can do four or five you can do ten if you want but that's what makes Please it don't. your personal list oh okay well i did four At i don't number were 20, we supposed to I do got... five <laughs> you could do like i said you could do whatever whatever i've got four and starting at four i've got joe burrow um i think a lot of people have started taking notice of him and uh, I think that's understandable. And the reason why I think he's in the top four for the Heisman right now, especially in in my opinion, you know, he he's thrown for 52% of his passing yards last season through four games this year. Four games. And I think that's tremendous. He's also thrown for 17 touchdowns and two interceptions. He's top four or he's, he's top 10 in nearly every passing category in the country and uh he's really revitalized lsu's offense and he's number four for me are you not going three through one are we blake are we going you four? can go one at a time okay yeah. well i mean i had jonathan taylor at five but i i mean i'm not no, dis, no disrespect to him but i don't know how much he matters because i think there's four guys that can really be taken seriously it's tough. Like it's tough. Any of these guys could be number one. For now, I still have Justin Fields at four. He's been amazing, but these guys are all so so close. So just by a slight, very slight margin, I still have him at four. I did five, so I'll just go down to four. But my number five was Jonathan Taylor. At number four, I'm doing Joe Burrow. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, at, at my number five. Oh I- man. <laughs> Why didn't you just say five? I would have said who my number five was. Who well, was in five? the doc, it does say... Jonathan Taylor. It, well, it does <laughs> say we it's October. Time to take this seriously. Who are your top five as Dude, of right I don't now? Know, I don't know why I just stopped at four, but I, I number five is Jonathan Taylor. Why don't we just keep the trend So going, at, huh? at my number five, I actually have Chuba Hubbard, which, guys, at the moment, we, we know that Jonathan Taylor is actually the best running back in college football, but so far this year, it's been Chuba Hubbard, and it's not even close. He almost has 1,000 rushing yards. I think he has, like, 960 rushing Ninth, yards. 938 on 128 attempts with 10 touchdowns. So he has 940 rushing yards, and I believe the next closest is, like, in the low 600s. Jonathan Taylor is not even top five in regards to rushing yards. Number two is J.K. Dobbins with 654. So he essentially has 300 more yards than the next guy. He's been absolutely fantastic. And, again, Jonathan Taylor is the best running back in college football but in regards to right now who's been the best, you know, statistical running back, it's Chuba Hubbard. So I got him at five. And at number four, just joining these guys, I got Joe Burrow. There you go. <laughs> so jumping down to three, uh, I've got Justin Fields. You know, Lyle's talked about him all season. I agree with all that. We've already talked about him on the show. Um, I think he's done a great job, and he's my number three. So we're just flipped. I have Burrow at three, but again, very small margin. I have Jalen Hurts at three. I don't right. think they've had enough big matchups and big games to put him at two yet. I like it. I got Tua, Tonga Vailoa, at three. I mean, I didn't realize how good his numbers have been this year. Mm-hmm. He has, like, a completion percentage of 76%, 21, in, 21 touchdowns compared to no interceptions, which is fantastic. I mean, he did the exact same thing last year. But I remember, I think it was Lyle's case where he's doing this essentially against garbage teams, which he is, which, again, respectable teams. Duke's a respectable team. Southern Miss, sure, why not? Fantastic numbers, but until Tua starts doing it against better opponents, I'm not going to give him the advantage there, but I got him right now at number three. So for number two, I've got Tua. Um, kind of following up with what Blake said, I just think he's been... Uh, I, I think he's flown under the radar. And, and it goes back to the point that I made about Alabama earlier. I think that some people have chosen not to pay too much attention to Alabama because they're Alabama and everybody just expect, or they see the same thing every single week. And that's the ex- expectation every week. Um, and like Blake said, I don't think people have really paid attention to how good some of his numbers really are. Um, so I've got two at number two. I have two. Again, hasn't played a whole ton of good teams, but... Blake and I were talking about it today. Like, I mean, the fact that he's played a handful of games already and he's got a 76%—I mean, he's completed 76% Like, it doesn't of his passes. matter who you play. Even if you're playing the Pasadena City College Lancers, completing three out of every four passes, that's impressive. Yeah. So, I mean, his numbers have been off the charts. Bama's doing Bama things. And, yeah, they haven't played a whole bunch of good teams yet. But I've got two at two. I have Justin Fields at two. So, I, I just— 
which gives away my number one, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it because oh, I'm no, here. No, 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 that's but not I'm how this wait. works, Brady. Fine, Blake. That's not how this works. This is our show, Blake. This is a show um, the That people. is true. It is our show. Last week when we were in the sports bureau, you were like, hey, Blake, something about our show. And I said, no, Brady, it's our show. And everyone that was in the room went, aww. Yeah, it made you look like a real good guy. I am a great guy. I'm a fantastic guy. At my number two, and this is tough for me because I think as of right now, it's 1A and 1B. I just happen to be giving the edge to one guy over the other. But I have Justin Fields at number two. He's been absolutely fantastic this season. I'm sure George is asking themselves every night, why do we let him go? But, hey, that's your fault, Georgia, because I hope you're enjoying Jake Fromm. But, yeah, I got Justin Fields at two. But I had, would have no problem having him at one right now. But, like I said, it's just a matter of who I think has been a little more dominant. And I'll get to that when I get to my number one. But, Josh, let's hear who yours is. Number one, I've got Jalen Hurts. Um, he leads the nation in QBR. He's top 10 in pretty much every single other um, quarterback stat, too. And here's a stat that really jumps out to me. And this is something I, I noticed not even doing prep for this show. I noticed it a few days ago. I'm looking at the nation's leading rushers because I was seeing if maybe there was a steal for fantasy. Jalen Hurts is number 23 in the nation in rushing yards. And I think that's extremely impressive. Um, I mean, he's number 23 in rushing yards. He's already rushed for nearly 500 yards this year, averaging about 10 yards per carry. He's got five touchdowns, and that's just on the ground. Uh, he's my... It's 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 close, but for me, that's enough to confidently put him at number one. Well, you took my whole point. But yeah, I've, I've got Jalen at number one. Look, his numbers as a running back alone, like Josh was just talking about, as a running back alone... His numbers are phenomenal. I mean, and to be exact, looking at Jalen, I mean, he's thro- he's rushed for 443 yards and he's thrown five touchdowns. Now look at what he's doing as a passer. I mean, this guy, 1,300 yards and 12 touchdowns in the course of four games. This guy is off the charts. Lincoln Riley is making him look like one heck of a quarterback. And he's my number one. I mean, it's all really close, but he is my number one. I've got Tua at number one just because I, I think – you look at everything that they've done. He hasn't played. Has he played a full game yet? This past week may have been his first full game. Who'd you say? Who'd you say? Sorry. Oh, sorry. My I, I turned your mic off. You were talking to Josh. Oh. Um, I have I have two at number one. I don't and just think so. Uh, if if that he probably played the whole game against South Carolina, I think. Yeah, and if he's played one complete game, that shows that he could be the most valuable player to that team. Because say he needs to play the entire game, they're not going to be in a situation like that for a while. So I think I have two at one just because he's leading the country in the passing categories. It might not be the, the pure passer rating or anything, but he leads in passing yards. He's got up, or up there in touchdowns. He has 22, uh, I'm sorry, 23 touchdowns. So I'm going two at one just because it's a, it's a pretty safe lock for now. Yeah, I mean, again, with some of these guys, especially these quarterbacks, you really can't do any wrong because Tua, like we said, is kind of going under the radar with 21 touchdowns, no interceptions. He's throwing, you know, 76% of his passes for completions. But Jalen Hurts, I got him at my number one right now. He's completing 78% of his passes, 1,300 yards, 12 touchdowns, one interception. Now, I believe up until this past week, he had some crazy stat where he had more touchdown passes than incompletions. Now I think he currently has 19 incompletions with 12 touchdowns. He's been absolutely, absolutely dominant. And we don't even take into account his rushing. I mean, he's averaging 9.5 yards per rush, 443 yards, 5 touchdowns. Just as a rusher, I mean, like Josh said, that would probably have you somewhere in the top 10 for the Heisman voting. That's just as a quarterback. So he's been fantastic, but I, I think you can make the case for Jalen Hurts, Justin Fields, Tua, for any of those three. But it's going to be interesting, guys. But I have the current updated Heisman odds right now. Now we talked about it. Tua is currently the favorite at minus 130. Then it goes Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, Justin Fields, Jonathan Taylor, Chuba Hubbard with Justin Herbert and Jake Fromm, Trevor Lawrence, who opened the season as the favorite, which I believe he was either 2.5 to 1 or 3 to 1 odds, something like that. He is currently 75 to 1 odds. Talk about a downfall. Yeah. But say he puts on a hell of a second half of the season and jumps right back up, would you not put money on that right now? That's a, that's a good question, but that is the perfect transition into our next segment, buy or sell. Now, one of our longtime viewers, David Klain, said we needed to spice up the show, bring some new different energy, bring some new segments. So, David Klain, this is for you. So hopefully he's listening tonight. He's in Spain right now. Well, is that a problem? I don't know what time it is in Spain. Well, I don't see what the problem is. I don't know. Well... If you could turn the music up just a little tad, Brady. It's 5, so it's 5 a.m. in Spain. Oh, so, we, so I'd assume he's listening to it. Probably at the gym right now, getting a nice morning workout in. 
Mm -hmm. Listen to the show. So, David, this is for you guys. Buy or sell it. Pretty much I'm going to say something, and you guys are either going to buy or sell it. Buy means you like it. Sell means you don't like it. We just talked about Trevor Lawrence. Currently 75 to 1 odds to win the Heisman. So, guys, Trevor Lawrence will figure things out and finish the season top five in the Heisman voting. You know what? I'm going to sell it. And uh, and the reason why is kind of what we talked about earlier. I think he's obviously a top 10 pick in his draft class. I think he's the number one quarterback off the board if he's not the first player off the board. Um, but you know what? I don't see him reaching Heisman standards this year, even in a weak ACC conference, because I've, I've constantly said in the past four years on this show, the winner of the Heisman Trophy is not only the MVP of college football, but if you take him off of his team, I think that that team should be completely different. And... I don't think Clemson would be that much worse off. So I I, yeah, I, I just don't see it. I'm going to sell it. I sell it too. If he gets into the top five, it's going to be like right at five. They don't, it's going to be right at the buzzer. Yeah, so I, I'm i going to sell. I'm going to sell it because he's not really worried about it because he has next year. There you go. I'm going to sell that as well. The Big 12 title game will be Texas and Oklahoma. I buy that 100%. I think Baylor looks kind of good, um, and we'll see what else happens in the Big 12, but I'm confident that it's going to be Texas and Oklahoma. Me too. Texas, Oklahoma, buy it 100%. Put all the money in the bank on it, baby. I'm buying that one. Now, we do have some sleeper teams like Baylor, maybe Oklahoma State, that have looked pretty pretty good, but I, I think without a doubt, I'm going to give it a 95% chance that it's going to be Oklahoma versus Texas. The final one, guys, two SEC teams will be in the college football playoff. I buy that one, too. Um, I, Given that Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, and LSU, I think, are all currently in contention, I just find it really hard to believe that two of those four, let alone three of those four, don't make the college football playoff. And I know that they've all got to play each other. I know that there's a possibility that some of these teams can meet up in the conference championship, but I still buy it. I think there's going to be two. Me too. Georgia and Alabama, for that matter. I think those guys both have a chance to go undefeated by the time the title game comes around. And if those two are going up against each other at 12-0 and and one of them loses by a touchdown, I don't see a reason why both of them don't get in. I think the big deciding factor will be However many losses the losing team of the SEC championship has, that will decide it. If it's a second loss, I could see it being only one team. But I'm going to buy it because I think it will be a one-loss SEC team. Yeah, I'm going to buy it as well. I think Bama is going to be a guaranteed lock to get in there. But Georgia, they could easily be a top-four team. LSU, they could easily be a top-four team. Auburn, they could easily be a top four team. So, hey, maybe things get freaky and we get three SEC teams that'll be in the college football playoff. But I think there will easily be. I think. I'm in on it. Hey, let's just get really freaky. <laughs> let's have an guys. SEC have championship four. playoff and then the college football playoff. Also, I'm just going to ask really quick because I guess I turned away. How did the Nationals take the lead in the bottom of the ninth? Juan Soto hit a ball to right that the right fielder just totally misplayed. I mean, it would have oh dropped in God, front of him. Who the hell? <laughs> and it got by him, and three runs scored, and the Nationals took the lead. So it was a play you should have made. Uh, not like. Oh, like I just saw the, re the game, I just saw the replay. Yeah. That is upsetting. All right, but that does wrap up this edition of Buy or Sell. Now. We are going to go into our Q&A segment now. I always enjoy doing this, guys, because for Q&A, we are going to be taking callers this week. Now, our first caller, he hasn't called in yet, is going to be Wake Forest diehard fan Captain Rob, who tried getting in a few weeks ago, but we had to cut the lines. He got into Brady, but we had to say, sorry, Captain Rob, you can't. Now, guys, perfect timing. Well oh done, goodness. Captain Rob. Now, Captain Rob is one of our biggest fans, and he's never called into the show somehow. I don't know why. He always listens. He's one of our biggest fans, but he's never called into the show. Now, before we talk to Captain Rob, if you'd like to call in and ask us a question, the phone number is 602-496-5156. The phone number, once again, is 602-496-5156. Now, if you've called into the show recently, we ask that you maybe wait a week or two because we'd like to get other people to call in, like Captain Rob here himself, who couldn't get in a few weeks ago. So, like I said, if you've called in before... If you, well, the audio just sounded weird there. That's weird. I turned the phone line on. Oh, that's probably why. So, yeah, call in a few weeks. But, yeah, if you want to call and ask us a question, go ahead. So, joining us for the first time ever on the Harris Highlight Show is Captain Rob. Captain Rob, how is your Tuesday night going? Uh, it's going all right, I guess. 
Well, that is yeah, fantastic. <laughs> now, Captain Rob, I know you've been dying for us to talk Wake Forest on the show. You've been dying to ask us a Wake Forest question. So first off, shout out to your Wake Forest Demon Deacons who are still undefeated on the season. They cracked the top 25. So I guess my I, I'm just going to ask you, how hyped are you for Wake Forest and do they have what it takes to win it all this year? Can they win the national championship? Um, that's a very bold statement that I will not make. <laughs> um, they, I believe personally that they can, their ceiling is 11 and one right now because the varying competition in the ACC seems lacking each week. But then you get teams like Duke who are four and one and basically blew out Virginia Tech last week. So it's it's a mishmash, which is not favorable as, in some degree. I like it. Captain Rob, come in with the hot take that they'll be 11-1, but what question do you have for us this week? Um, okay, so this is looking to be one of their best seasons in over a decade. And I was thinking, my question was, is a two-parter of, where do you think they'll rank at the end of the year, and what bowl game do you see them in? Let's, well, I mean, since they have five wins already, I mean, they're probably likely going to finish with, I would have to assume, at the very least, maybe eight wins or so. So already they're probably going to be in a very good bowl game. And bless you, Josh. Bless you, Josh. In, regard, you. in regards to where they finish on the season, I mean, I'm looking at their schedule right now, and for the most part, I... I could see them winning a good amount of games. Now, they do have that tough one out of Clemson, which, you know, it's going to be a, a tough, tough one. But, like, Louis, uh, yeah. Louis, Louisville, NC State, Florida State, Virginia Tech, Duke, I mean, a lot of those games I, I could easily see Wake Forest winning. I'm not exactly sure what their record's going to be, but I, I anticipate Wake Forest to finish the season probably going into the bowl game ranked between maybe 18 to the 23 range, I think is fair for them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, currently sitting at what twenty two? The twenty two or twenty three? Twenty two. And currently sitting at twenty two. You know, I've got their schedule up right here. Um, it's it's tough to really, for me, point out potential, you know, upsets. I guess you could call them on their schedule because I think the SEC is kind of all or the the ACC is kind of all over the place. But I mean, with Louisville, Florida State, NC State. I think there are some formidable teams on there, at least compared to Wake Forest. But realistically, I mean, there's one game on their schedule that I think they lose right now, and it's Clemson. I don't think they they win 11 games. I think they win at least eight. And uh, it, my, did my mic just go off? Oh, there we go. I don't know what just happened. I accidentally um, turned on TalkBack. I was going to try to ask Blake a question. Sorry. Oh, well. All right, then. Um this is falling apart. Uh, yeah, I, I think they win at least eight, eight or nine games, and, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them go to the um, whatever's the number two bowl or for the runner-up in the ACC. Uh, what, what bowl game Holiday is that? Holiday Bowl, Outback Bowl, Pinstripe Bowl, Camping oh, World oh, Bowl? Well, it, it just depends on what um, – it, obviously, if Syracuse goes Syracuse, good lord! If Clemson goes to you know the same talent level, um, if Clemson goes to the playoff, then I, I would assume that Wake Forest would go to the Orange Bowl. So it's going to be exciting to see. I mean, Wake Forest. This is obviously one of the better seasons as of late. So Captain Rob, best of luck to your Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Hopefully, they can go eleven and one. Maybe they can be the upset against Clemson. Hopefully, they can go to a really good bowl game. Thanks for following along as always. And hey, like I said, if Wake Forest can keep this up. We're going to need you back on to talk some more Demon Deacons football, probably with the matchup coming with Clemson in about a month or so. There you go. All right, my man. Have yourself a good night, and best of luck tomorrow. You too. All right, now it's always exciting. I mean, the fact that Captain Rob for, like, years has been talking so highly of Wake Forest, and we always kind of just, eh, Wake Forest. And <laughs> now Wake Forest is actually legit, which is awesome. So great to see. Glad we were able to get Captain Rob on the phone. Now the phone lines are still open, so, again, if you'd like to call... Wow, that was perfect timing. I don't even have to do People so. People want to talk. Didn't have to do so. But, yeah, oh, Lyle, I am just upset about this game because as Josh and I are Dodgers fans, we were hoping... For the Brewers. They're yeah. without Christian Yelich. The Nationals have a great pitching. Now, the good thing is they did use Scherzer. They did use Strasburg. So that might be a little tough for them, but we're of, not worried. Of all people, Josh Hader lost the game for the Brewers. Let's yeah. also let's also point out that for a team that has never won a playoff series, winning the wild card game, in fact, does not count as a playoff series. So, uh, let's see. 
Let's see what they can do. Now, up next on the phone lines, we got Brady. Now, it's not Brady in the other studio. It's Brady from Baton Rouge. So, hey, guys, thank you. We love you, man. Oh, we'll boy. Talk. Brady from Baton Rouge, how's your night going? Pretty good. All right. Now, again, I, w- I would assume you have some strong, strong allegiance to the LSU Tigers. Absolutely. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. I mean, I mean, we were very high on the Tigers early on. So, Brady from Baton Rouge, I'm excited to see if this is an LSU question or something else. But what do you have for us this week? I just want to know what y'all's overall thoughts on uh, LSU are. Well, I mean, I, I talked about it earlier. I, I think they're easily one of the four best teams in the country. You can make the case they're top three. And I think I said this two weeks ago. I'm all in on LSU this this season just for the fact of Joe Burrow because it seems like LSU every season, they're always good. They're always a top 10 team, but it always seems like they lacked the good play from the quarterback. Well, they have Joe, Joe Burrow, who's a Heisman candidate, and I think with him at the helm, LSU's finally in good hands to maybe get over that hump and actually get to the college football playoff. Yeah, and and like I said earlier, their offense is just totally revitalized with Burrow at the helm. And uh, for me, uh, like I said earlier on the show, it was was kind of tough to keep them out of my top four. Um, But again, I I think, like I said a couple times, one through eight, I think are just so close in terms of pure talent that I would not be surprised to see LSU get into the college football playoff at the end of the year. And uh, I think they can do some damage in the SEC against some of these other SEC teams that are in the top ten. Yeah, I like them over Florida. I like them over Auburn. I mean, obviously the one that looms out at you is Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. And, and even if they lose that game and they go 11-1, and one, uh, I mean, there's still a chance. I mean, obviously Alabama and LSU would probably be fighting for that West spot in the title game. However, I mean, if LSU is that impressive and they beat Florida and Auburn by a lot and their one loss is in Baton Rouge and say it's by 10 points or less, I think they've got a real shot at the top four. So, I mean, I have LSU as one of the four best teams in the country right now, and they have an offense that's been as, as good as it's been in years. There's always a chance with Coach O at the helm. I love it. There's always a good chance. But I'm looking at LSU's schedule right now, and even so, let's say they lose to Alabama closely and then they maybe lose to Auburn closely. Or you know maybe they lose to Florida Coast and those teams end up being you know pretty good. I still think there's a chance that LSU maybe can get into the college football playoff. Like Lyle, I know you mentioned it, but I think there's a chance of how dominant they can be if they can pick up some of these good wins. I think they still have a chance to be a, a two-loss team making the college football playoff. So I'm really high on LSU, and I would assume that you. I mean, this is probably one of the better LSU teams you've seen as of recent years. Yeah, we uh, we love Joe down here. Yeah, Joe and uh, and Coach O. So hopefully LSU can get the job done. Now they do have a very tough task this upcoming week against Utah State. So, I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It's going to be a great matchup next week when they go against Florida. So hopefully for Florida's sake they can win this week and keep that top 10 ranking so LSU can get a good ranking. But Brady from Baton Rouge, we appreciate it. We know it's late over there. And uh, I think I'm going to let Brady finish this uh, phone call right now. Hey, guys, thank you. We love you, man. Go Tigers. Have a good night, Brady. Yo, too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really like LSU guys, and there's another weird thing with the audio right there. So we're getting people, so we got Captain Rob. And I, I don't know if Captain Rob necessarily is from North Carolina. I'm not necessarily sure. So we got North Carolina. We got some guy calling from Louisiana. So we got some people staying up late for the show. It's past 11 over there. Well done, Brady. Well done. Thanks. Fantastic. Thanks, we, we done with the phone lines? Executive producer of the year. Now I think we have time for one more question. So let's give... No! No! <laughs> So we're going to give maybe like 30 seconds for someone to call in if they want, if they're able to, but we'll have to wait and see. But let's just go to some question right now, and this comes from a fan that's going to be going to the Florida-Auburn game this upcoming week. They're also going to be going to the Florida-LSU game and the Florida-Georgia game. They're going to be going to college. Florida-Georgia line. Oh. They're going to be going to college game day if they're at any of those games. Now, I think, isn't game day this week at Florida-Auburn? Gainesville, first time since 2012. So it's going to be at Florida-Auburn. He wants to know, do I make... A sign for the Harris Highlight Show. It'll be at each one. So what should the sign say? Now, I assume he's going to get a prime spot. So if he gets a prime spot, this is going to be some elite television, guys. Hopefully we're not the guy, not like the guy from uh, Iowa where they write a news article on him and they dig up some old tweets where all of a sudden we're getting exposed in a few weeks. So let's take this with some caution. But what should his sign say? So I hope you like arts and crafts because what you should do is your sign should say, Hey man, love you man, go tigers and it hey should guys, have thank a, you. We love you, man. Go tigers. It should say that. And then it should have a cutout of Coach O, but instead of Coach O, it's just Brady Klain's face. Yes. And then we're all just in the background. Arts and crafts. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is, I mean, this is a loaded <laughs> question. I mean, remember, I mean, uh, I have one regarding college baseball, but not enough, not enough people would get it. Um, so I'm trying oh to think. Oh my God, who the <laughs> hell cares? It's just too perfect. Sorry, go ahead, Lyle. Uh, <laughs> I don't like Tigers. I mean, Tigers, Gators. I don't know. Like, uh, I, Tiger over Tiger greater than or Gator greater than Tiger. Tiger greater than Gator. You can never go wrong with the greater than sign. So I think here's what you should do. This one always seems to get on like the college game day Instagram and Twitter. Just in bold Sharpie. If you're not going to do Josh's idea, which I think you should, in just bold thick Sharpie, just write this is a sign. Oh, instead of this is, or uh, instead of we want Bama, you should make one that says we want Rutgers. We want the HH show. I think just a simple sign that says the Harris Highlight Show because it'll be simple, but it'll get people thinking, what is the Harris Highlight Show? Oh. I must know. Mm. Also, uh, I'll throw my Venmo under there I so I can get some uh, <laughs> Venmo requests. That'd be fantastic. But that does put wrap your up. Venmo, too. Of course. Now, that does wrap up this Q&A segment, so thank you to everyone that called. Sorry to all those that couldn't get through. We just unfortunately have no time. It's just a jam-packed show that just all of a sudden the time goes by fast. We have 12 minutes to get through these pickums. Josh has something really good for the worst of the worst, so we want to make sure we get to that. But before we get to that, it's time to go over our pickum rankings. Brady, cue the music, because I, I just love hearing the music when I do these rankings and in regards to the rankings for our other Harris Highlights Pick'ems group. You know what? I'll do the Harris Highlights Pick'ems group first. Coming in first place, we have a two-way tie with 38 points. Lax Guy 2400 and Jim Softball. That's a great name. So he's still in second. There's a lot of people, though. We have about, oh my goodness, we have like 12 people with 37 points. So this is getting close. Don't oh make one goodness. wrong pick, guys. And there it is. I was just waiting for yep. it. Now, moving to our own personal rankings in last place still. With 33 points is yours truly in third place. <laughs> Every time, Blake just suddenly just, ding. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that I always try to make these bold picks. Last week I picked Cal over Arizona State while you guys picked that one. It's just because you fall behind so badly in the first two weeks that you have to make bold picks yeah. later. But then again, I make these bold picks and I have like a 20-point lead. In third place with 35 is Lyle. In second place, now we kind of jump up a notch to 40 points. Jeez. Is Josh. Oh, no! And in first place with 41 points 41. is Brady. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one's good. So Dude, I'm, I'm claiming my crown back. So I'm down by eight points now, so I really need to have a bounce back week. All Wait, right, who's the only person on the show to have to, to not have one? Brady. Okay. It's Brady. Ooh. Very fitting. Maybe this is all set up this way. All right, guys, we have about 10, 11 games to go through. We want Josh to get to his worst of the worst. Yes. So let's try to be at the worst of the worst by 8.28. So we have eight minutes. Let's get things underway with number 18 UCF at Cincinnati. UCF is Cincinnati. Cincinnati decided to play in the XFL this weekend uh, with their brand new field. Phenomenal. Um, I am. I don't like the white end zone, but other than that, yeah. that's really cool. Also, it's not turf, so do they just spend that much money painting the whole field? I'm pretty sure Cincinnati just burned a hole in the ozone layer. Um, anyway, I'm taking number 18 UCF on the road. Same. Golden Knights. I haven't seen the field, so I'm Googling it now. But uh, Go to our Twitter. I UC tweeted UCF. it earlier. I'm going UCF on the road. This field is fantastic. The black field. I think the face is fantastic. Like Josh said, I don't like the white end zone. But I'm still going to go with... You know what? The Cincinnati Bearcats oh, are going to be hyped up on that black field. It's phenomenal. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Bearcats with the upset. Oh, I'm going to fall behind so many points. Number 14, Iowa. Sorry. Now, this is a really good game, guys. Number 14, Iowa at number 19, Michigan. Yeah, we don't have as many like flashy games this weekend outside of um, another game that will be in the Pickums in the Big Ten and then obviously this one. But there are going to be some really evenly matched games this week, and I think this is where we start. Uh, I'm taking number 19, Michigan, at home. I, I, I like them playing at the big house, and I think they are a little more well-rounded than Iowa is. And I think it's going to be a first really legitimate test for Iowa and for Michigan after that loss against Wisconsin. So I think it's a bounce-back win for the Wolverines. It's going to be about 18 points scored in this game. But uh, Big House is a tough place to play, and for that reason, I like Michigan. I think they get a bounce-back win. I like Michigan at home in this one. It's going to pull off an upset at home. I like I like the, the Wolverines. Yeah, I think the last time these two teams played is when Iowa hit that game-winning field goal. And uh, 
that was a fun time, but I'm going to go with the Wolverines in this one. TCU at Iowa State. This is another evenly matched game coming out of the Big 12. I think they're going to be a lot of points scored, and I'm taking Iowa State at home. I like TCU on the road in this one. I think it's, like Josh said, an offensive shootout, but I like the Horn Frogs. Let's see. A frog versus a cyclone. If we ask our... Uh, resident common sense guy, Lyle, obviously the Horned Frogs would win, but we're going with <laughs> Iowa State. I'm going to go with the Horned Frogs in this game. Number the, the best game for this upcoming week, number 7 Auburn at number 10 Florida. We're getting to the best game early in the segment. Yeah, I think so too, and uh, Florida's going to be a tough place to play, but you know what? Going on the road, I like Bo Nix and the Tigers. I, I, I like Auburn to get this win in Gainesville. I'm never high on Florida. I, I just never think they're as good as their record shows early in the year. So I got Auburn on the road. You okay. want to show me different Florida? As I used to like to always oh, say, yes. prove me wrong. There yes. you go. You I know, like it. Agreed. A according to NCAA 14, the video game, hashtag bring it back, they always have the toughest places to play. Well, number four was Florida. So because NCAA standards, because, you know, they're a great organization, I'm going to go with Florida at home because it's the number four toughest place to play. And because yeah, why not? Brandon? And not. It's coming later. Bo Nix is probably going to have the typical Bo Nix stat line of maybe he completes 60% of his passes, those for 240 yards with two touchdowns and interception. But it's going to be enough because I, I agree with Lyle. I don't believe Florida deserves to be 10. They have not looked as good as the top 10 team should, so I'm going to go with Auburn on the road. Number 11, Texas at West Virginia. This is not the West Virginia team we've seen in the past few years. I don't think the offense is nearly as good as it used to be, and I think Texas is a pretty complete team. Uh, I really like the offense. I like Sam Ellinger at quarterback. I'm taking the Longhorns on the road. Texas over West Virginia. Texas on the road. Yeah, this is easy. Texas. Western Michigan at Toledo. Here's another game that I think is going to fly under the radar, but is probably a... a a pretty evenly matched game. I like the Broncos on the road to go into Toledo and get the win. We all know that Toledo is a tough environment to play in, um, but I think the Broncos pull this one out. I'm going to take Toledo at home. I'm, I'm feeling Toledo. Toledo's got a great name of their stadium. It's called the Glass Bowl. However, they're not going to break. I'm going Toledo. I need to catch up, so it's now or never. I'm going to go with Western Michigan. Baylor at Kansas State. I saw some people on Twitter in our comments saying that they think Baylor might be a threat in the Big 12 Conference. And although I don't totally disagree, I like Kansas State at home to get the win over Baylor. I don't think Baylor's out of this yet, especially in conference. I think they're better than they have been in years past, but I'm going to take the Wildcats at home. I like Baylor on the road. I mean, they just squeaked out that win on Saturday against Iowa State, and, and for that reason, I think they're going to ride that momentum and pick up a win. K State at home. This is a tough one. I mean, this it's a really tough one. The spread is currently at two points, so it's essentially a pick em. But my gut tells me to go with Baylor, so I'm going to go with Baylor. Air Force at Navy. Fantastic. Talk about an evenly matched game. I mean, goodness. So... Two of the Armed Forces schools, Navy and Air Force. Air Force is averaging 34.5 points a game. Navy's averaging 36. Air Force surrenders 21 points a game. Navy surrenders 17. They both average about 450 total yards a game. They both pass for about 110 yards a game. They both rush for about 335 yards a game. I mean, it's just so even, but I'm going to take Navy at home Ooh. to get the win. I always take Navy in the military games. I got Navy. They're the strongest military team, I think. I will not talk bad about any of these teams because we all know they could just beat all of us up. But I'm going Air Force on the road. Rutgers could beat us up, Brady. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. I'm going to go with Air Force. I think they're the slightly better team. But those stats that Josh provided were fantastic. Virginia Tech at Miami, the battle of the underwhelming bowl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could say that again. The it's the battle bowl. of the underwhelming bowl. Like there the it Boca is again. Raton, Cherry <laughs> Bundy, Tart, Cherry Cherry Boca bowl. Raton Bowl. Yeah, I'm taking Miami. Miami at home. The U, Miami at home. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Hurricanes as well. Arizona at Colorado. Well, LaVisca Chenault got hurt a couple weeks ago against Arizona State. Yeah, he's then he supposed went to, to mill afterwards. He, sure. He's supposed to be back again this week, but there was one guy who beat ASU up, and it was Tony Brown. I don't know who that guy is, but he and the Buffs are going to go off this week. I think Colorado's going to win. Mm. Colorado's got a good offense like Josh was just talking about, and the fact they're going to be at home, Arizona team that has 
played very so-so thus far. I like the Buffs at home. Hey, Josh, say Colorado. I'm a giraffe. I'm going Colorado in this game because why, Lyle? Because why, why not? not? Now, I think Khalil Tate, I, I don't know if he'll be playing in this game. That determines a lot of things. But I'm just going to assume he's not playing in the game. So let's do that, and let's go with the Buffaloes. Number 25, Michigan State at number 4, Ohio State. This game's going to go one of two ways. Either one, Michigan State is going to slow down Ohio State's offense for a while, and then Ohio State pulls away, or Ohio State's going to lead 28-0, and then they're not going to score any more points. Either way, I like Ohio State by 17. Ohio State's favored in this game by 20 and a half. Ooh. I would honestly take them with the points. I think they kill Michigan State. Hammer the over Ohio State at home. Yeah, this, this can get ugly really quickly. I'm going to go with the Buckeyes, which brings us to our worst of the worst, which is our final pick of the week because ASU is on a bye. So, Josh, your moment has come. He's got, a, like, a paragraph written over there. Oh, this is going to be good. So, guys, you the need, worst okay. of the... Sorry. <laughs> I don't even announce the game. That's how bad it is. <laughs> we rarely have these, but it's a battle of two Power 5 schools, some Pac-12 schools, Oregon State at UCLA. I went back in my notes and tried to find the last time we had a Power 5 worst of the worst. Some of my stuff got deleted, so it might not have been that long ago, but I think it was like the beginning of last season. So, guys, this is the first time Oregon State and UCLA have met since 2016, but that's irrelevant. Austin Burton is supposed to be the starting quarterback for UCLA this week because DTR got hurt last week. Yes, unfortunately. Burton enrolled in April of 2017. He has not seen any game action. He played on the scout team, and he was like offensive scout team player of the year. He's from Newton, Massachusetts, the hometown of legendary public school administrator Bob Sherman. But that's irrelevant because he transferred from his high school in Mass down to West Orange High School in Winter Garden, Florida. And as we all know, Winter Garden, Florida has a Florida Collegiate Summer Baseball team called the Winter Garden Squeeze. Ooh, squeeze. Um, their team logo is a baseball cut in half, and the inside of the baseball looks like an orange. And... Um, and I think that's pretty cool. The logos are blue and or, or the, the team logo is blue and orange. Um, Winter Garden, Florida is near Orlando. It's about an one hour north of Polk County, which is the state's primary region for citrus production. And you know what, guys? I've got orange juice in my fridge. I'm taking Austin Burton and UCLA this weekend oh to take goodness. down the Beavers. Wait a minute. Oregon State's color is orange, though. No, no, no. I'm going with the orange juice, and I'm taking UCLA. Wow. Yeah. Owen Wilson, wow. Yeah. Uh, wow. I'm going to go with UCLA, too. I'm going UCLA at home. Oregon State is just so bad. <laughs> they are so bad, but they always they almost beat Stanford this week. Stanford's also not great. They're so bad. Both of these teams are so bad. I, I, I'm going to go with UCLA, but it's going to be ugly. But that does wrap up this week's edition of The Pick'ems, which does wrap up this show. Bum, 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 bum. Thank you, everyone, for tuning, and thank you to our callers. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at the HH Show underscore. It's a must-follow. We're coming in on 700 followers. If you'd like to listen to the show live, tune in every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on blazeradioonline.com. I am not doing that, Brady, and Josh is already in my shot. Well, for Josh Schaefer, who's doing some dance, Lyle Goldstein, Brady Klein with our two interns over there in studio. We love the interns. This has been Blake Harris from the Bill Austin Radio Studio at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism in beautiful downtown Phoenix. We'll see you guys next week. No!